ഹലോ ആൻഡ് താങ്ക്സ് ഫോർ ജോയിനിങ് എസ് അഗൈൻ വെൽക്കം ലൈഫ് ഈസ് ബ്യൂട്ടിൽ ഫുൾ ഐ എം സണി ജേക്കബ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് എക്സോൺ മൊബൈൽസ് ബ്യൂട്ടിൽ ഫോളോമർ പ്രോഡക്ട്സ് ആൻഡ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റ് ടീം ടുഡേ ദ ടോപ്പിക് ഓഫ് ഡിസ്കഷൻ ഈസ് ഡാമ്പിക് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടീസ് വൈ ബ്യൂട്ടിൽ ആൻഡ് ഹാലോ ബ്യൂട്ടൽ റബ്ബേഴ്സ് ആർ എക്സലൻറ്റ് ചോയ്സസ് ഫോർ ഡാമ്പിങ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് റിവ്യൂ വി വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് ദ മേജർ ആസ്പെക്ട്സ് ഓഫ് ദ ഡാമ്പിങ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടീസ് ഓഫ് ബ്യൂട്ടൽ റബ്ബർ ഫസ്റ്റ് വി വിൽ ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് the most common bureau applications then some specific examples where damping properties play a role in product selection next we will briefly reconnect on what differentiates bureau rubber from other elastomers with an emphasis on what unique molecular structure and properties provide bureau rubber its superior damping performance and how to evaluate this then a generic bureau rubber formulation will be shared with some insights into how formulation components influence the damping performance of a cured compound finally we will conclude with an example to illustrate how the application temperature and frequency are key to developing a good damping compound ready to begin did you know that bureau rubber is used in a number of industrial consumer and automotive applications due to its unique performance attributes yes it is the fourth largest elastomer by volume used in the rubber industry bureau rubber is used in many applications ranging from tires pharmaceutical stoppers hoses adhesives and sealants sporting goods and in general rubber goods for automotive industrial and consumer products now let us focus on damping The damping property of bureau rubber helps to reduce vibrations in applications such as engine mounts, washing machines, train rail pads and shoe soles. We will go in to a bit more detail on materials for damping applications in this webinar. Many of you may already know what bureau rubber is, but let us reconnect on what exactly bureau rubber is. What differentiates bureau elastomers from other elastomers? and why bureau rubber has excellent damping properties over a wide range of temperatures bureau rubber is a copolymer of isobutylene with a small percent of isoprene as illustrated here the key structural feature that differentiates bureau rubber from other elastomers is the presence of two methyl groups on the same carbon atom on the polymer backbone these are called geminal dimethyl groups they are located on the alternating carbon atoms along the chain due to steric repulsion these methyl groups push apart forcing the bond angle on the carbon atom the jeb dimethyl groups to grow beyond the typical 109 degrees to about 124 degrees this results in chain stretching and a slightly rotated conformation which allows the polymer chain to pack efficiently resulting in a high packing density the tightly packed molecular structure and low free volume imparts many unique properties to butyl rubber such as high density low permeability excellent ozone water and chemical resistance and a broad glass transition temperature which is an important property for today's discussion on the superior damping properties of butyl rubber the high packing density and the rotated structure depicted here allow the interchain interactions of the methyl groups which provides a unique viscoelastic behavior and a much delayed elastic response to deformation the viscous nature of these molecular motions absorb energy and creates a highly damping rubber with a good shock absorption properties over a broad range of temperatures As we just mentioned, butyl rubber is a viscoelastic material, meaning the response to energy input has an elastic component which stores the energy and a viscous component which dissipates energy. The viscoelastic properties of polymers are commonly analyzed using measurements for example, a dynamic mechanical analyzer, often abbreviated as DMA. The DMA analysis can be conducted in a torsion mode and in a compression mode as shown here. 
or in other modes such as tension or shear. Molecular parameters such as storage modulus, loss modulus, tan delta, and glass transition temperature, or Tg, are typically probed using this method. So what is glass transition? You may already know it. It is the gradual and reversible transition from a brittle glassy state into a viscous or rubbery state as the temperature is increased. In most polymers, this transition occurs over a wide range of temperatures and is highly dependent on the polymer composition along the backbone. This transition can be quantified using the term tan delta, a parameter that indicates how a material absorbs and disperses energy. The higher the tan delta, the more energy is dissipated. The peak tan delta value is often used to define the glass transition temperature. Now take a look at the tan delta plot shown on the right hand side. Most rubbers, for example, epidium elastomer shown using the green curve, show a symmetric shape with a single narrow peak about 30 degrees Celsius wide due to the typical coiled structure as shown in the green insert. Compare this to the butyl curve shown here in blue. Butyl rubber shows an asymmetric, very broad tan delta curve with two peaks, a maximum peak on the high temperature side and an additional shoulder peak on the low temperature side. The peaks span over a broad temperature range of about 80 degrees Celsius, almost three times wider than other elastomers. There are two relaxation mechanisms responsible for the two peaks observed on the tan delta curve of butyl rubber. The first is due to a weak and fast segmental relaxation. This is seen in both butyl and epidia materials. However, the second peak, the main one seen in butyl rubber, is due to a much slower relaxation from the highly packed chain structure as shown in the blue insert. This imparts multiple segmental motions at high temperatures and causes a broadening of tan delta peak. These unique viscoelastic behaviors of butyl rubbers are responsible for the high damping and shock absorption properties over a broad range of temperatures. To better illustrate the superior damping behavior of butyl rubber, let's take a real life example. I will demonstrate the damping behavior of a few typical elastomers, including butyl rubber, using bouncing balls. We all know a rubber ball bounces when we drop it onto the ground from a height, but not completely return to the original height. Why? When a rubber ball is released from a height and falls to the ground, all the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. At the molecular level, when the ball comes in contact with the surface of the ground, the molecular chains of the ball are compressed by the downward force acting on it. During such deformation, some elastic energy is stored in the rubber ball, which is released upon the removal of the deforming forces. The rubber ball bounces back due to this elasticity. But rubber being viscoelastic, some of the energy is absorbed due to the internal friction and displacement. And that energy is dissipated as heat. Hence, complete recovery of the ball is impossible. In the case of the yellow ball made of butadiene rubber, the elastic response also referred to as resiliency is very good and thus it will bounce back almost to the original height. And thus the energy loss or damping is pretty low. Let's look at the case of natural rubber, the black ball. Initially the ball follow the same trajectory, but after contact with the ground, it does not recover to the same height. It has more damping than the butadiene rubber. How does EPDM rubber compare? Again, it follows the same initial trajectory, and this time it is quite similar to the behavior of the natural rubber ball. Therefore, natural rubber and EPDM have similar damping properties for this application. What do you think will happen with the butyl ball? Think back to the tan delta curve of butyl versus EPDM. Let's see what happens. The blue butyl ball did not bounce back much at all, indicating that there is a large loss of energy and thus very high damping and is superior compared to the other elastomers. In summary, a rubber that absorbs a greater amount of energy is a better damper. 
From this demonstration, hopefully it gets you thinking about how you can take advantage of the awesome damping power of butyl rubber in your applications. We showed earlier that the dynamic mechanical analyzer is a commonly used analytical tool for the evaluation of the damping performance of elastomers and their compounds. But what are some other ways to directly measure damping performance in a real world? Here we have a couple of additional measurement techniques specifically designed to measure damping performance. On the left shown is an example of Ersley mechanical oscillography response. It measures the mechanical properties of vulcanizates in a small range of deformation. And it is particularly well suited for the determination of damping under impact load. Typically, the test is conducted in compression at the test temperature such that at least three complete cycles are produced when obtaining the damped oscillatory curve. In this example, Bueller rubber clearly shows the most damping compared to other elastomers. Alternatively, a great tactile and visual method for measuring damping is the response plot of a ball rebound test. Here the damping of polymeric materials is determined by dropping a steel ball on the sample of interest from a fixed height and observing the height of rebound. The difference between two heights is proportional to the energy absorbed. The plots here show ball rebound values against temperature for volcanoids of butadiene rubber, natural rubber, EPDM, and butyl elastomers. Butyl rubber is distinctive with its excellent damping performance across a very broad range of temperatures. The low rebound of butyl rubber represents a large capacity to absorb mechanical energy under these conditions thus damping out undesirable vibrations encountered in vibrating automotive parts, engine mounts, running tires, appliances, and so on. Therefore, cured butyl rubber possesses exceptional ability to absorb vibrations and impact energy at temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius, and yet remains flexible down to around minus 70 degrees Celsius, its glass transition point. Now let's connect the dots and take a look at a few real life examples where dynamic properties are of practical importance. Have you ever looked at the feet of your washing machine and wondered what stabilizes the washing machine from moving with all the energy being released from inside? The rubber feet on a washing machine is an example of a low frequency application, while the railroad pads or speaker surrounds are high frequency applications. Butyl helps to deaden the unwanted vibration and noises in each of these examples. Here we are plotting the tan delta again, which is typically measured at 1 hertz across the temperature range of interest. Perhaps the 1 hertz frequency is similar to a washing machine. But what if the application you are interested is in damping of a 10 hertz frequency? Upon increasing the frequency of the DMA test, we can see that the tan delta response of a cured compound is shifted to higher temperatures. So when analyzing at these tan delta curves, it is useful to keep in mind the effect of temperature and frequency on the ability of your cured compound to dampen vibrations. Now let's take a look at what key aspects influence damping in a compound formulation. Several factors can influence damping in a rubber compound. Notice that I said rubber compounds, not rubber. Rubbers are never really used in their pure state. But rubber compounds, right? Rubber compounds are complex mixtures of a wide range of ingredients. So while the tan delta and glass transition temperatures of polymers are important pieces in, a, in creating a damping compound, it is critical to understand how other ingredients in a rubber compound impact damping. So where do you start in compounding butyl rubber for damping applications? Here we have provided a generalized damping compound which will give you a place to start. Damping compounds are typically rubber rich and since the polymer is the primary component, it therefore has the largest impact on damping performance. As we showed throughout the presentation, 
butyl rubber or its blends are preferred due to the superior damping properties. Filler is mainly used for reinforcement and can tune the compound hardness. However, it also impacts the damping performance of the compound. A mix of N330 and N990 high abrasion furnace black are typically used in damping applications. The lower size N330 provides strength and the larger N990 enhances the damping performance. Oil is also added to tune the hardness, glass transition, and fatigue life of the rubber compound. However, the lubrication it adds to the polymer chain typically reduces the damping performance. Polymer modifiers such as hydrocarbon resins are optional. They are often added to modify the TG and enhance addition but they impact damping in a similar fashion to oil. The cure system typically consists of sulfur, zinc oxide, stearic acid, along with accelerators. It is common to have a protectant system, but for butyl polymers, this is not usually needed because of its low unsaturation level. Remember, ExxonMobil is not only a global leader in the production of butyl rubber, but also has extensive capabilities for compound development as well as compound-related analytical testing. Let's reconnect to the various applications we have discussed where damping and vibration absorption are essential. Damping plays a critical role for the performance of these products, from providing a smooth ride on trains and in cars to giving crisp, clear sound from our speakers or longevity to our appliances. Butyl is essential for comfort in our everyday life. Formulation is just the first step in rubber compounding, but mixing and processing the compound into its final form has its own set of hurdles. We encourage you to discuss with ExxonMobil's technical team, which can be found on butylrubber.com, for any help regarding formulation, mixing, fabrication, and testing. Do you need to connect with a butyl technical expert? Click on the Connect with an Expert button on our Butyl Rubber homepage. If you are interested in learning more about butyl rubber, we invite you to view our additional webinars that are shown here. We covered quite a bit of valuable information today on butyl damping. So in summary, remember this. Butyl rubber finds acceptance in a number of vibration control applications due to its high damping and good aging properties. With the valuable properties that butyl rubber has, we can have peace of mind that many of these applications in which we use in our everyday lives can function as they must with the support of butyl rubber. Thank you for joining this webinar and remember, life is beautiful. We invite you to connect with us to answer any questions you have and please be sure to follow us on our social media channel.